Working with piles of duplicated keyframes is a lot of fun. Not really, it actually kind of sucks. Especially if you want to change a bunch of stuff. I'm going to show you how we can package up complex animations inside of a blueprint that we can use throughout our project over and over again. And then we can trigger this animation inside of Sequencer using one keyframe. Let's get into it. So we've got the scene set up and just give you a quick overview of what we're looking at. I've got a sequence set up with two camera shots and I'll just show you how these go. I've got this spline track that I'm using to animate this pinball back and forth. Uh, and if you want more information on how that's set up, we've got another video that you can click on as well and check that out. And then I've also got the time of day animating on this just to kind of uh, give it a little extra mood, but you can see I've got this uh, main weird mushroom bumper looking thing. Uh, I don't know why I thought of this, but I did. But this is the main piece that we're going to focus on. So let's give you the quick overview that you can see. Just some foliage in this basic scene setup. I wanted to create a blueprint with a lot of different pieces into it and a number of different animations that could all be controlled at once. You can encapsulate all of this geometry and this whole asset with all these things into one piece. And then I can go through and duplicate these as many times as I want. But if I want to go back and change this, it's all bundled up into one blueprint asset. So changes can be streamlined and I can also set up my own controls and stuff like this as well to modify them depending on however I want to do it. But ultimately, if you have a hundred of these in here and someone says, oh, I want it to be just a little slower or I want something removed, you don't have to go through piles and piles of keyframes to adjust all these. You can make a few adjustments and they're automatically updated. On top of that, you don't have to duplicate all of these to have the same animation. You can kind of do these just on one keyframe. So. First thing I did was I wanted to use this mega scans asset because I wanted a mushroom and I wanted to build this weird little thing around it. Um, don't ask me why it just popped into my head. So the first thing I did was grab a mega scans asset and I wanted a reference of this to model it in Cinema 4D. So I brought it in, file export selected, and this just allowed me to export this out as an FBX file. So I had this as a good starting reference point. Um, instead of trying to build this around it and go back and forth is just a good starting point. So let's dive into Cinema 4D. So this is how I have this thing roughly animated and I did a little extra in Unreal and I knew that I wanted to animate this inside of Unreal, but I kind of wanted to just do my look development in here first and just quickly rough this out and get a feel for it. There's a few things that I had built. You can see I imported the Megascans asset here and then weird little ring things, a bunch of stuff spinning. At that point, we went to export. So I knew a lot of these static meshes I was going to bring in and just animate by hand because that was going to work a little bit better into the blueprint. But some of this stuff, I wanted to have this animating on its own. So like this folding asset, I found that it was just easier to export it out as an Alembic. So the way I broke this file down was this outer cylinder, this little ramp piece that you can see here, um, these spinning blades, which I'll show you how I automated the animation on these, and this outer static ring, these are things that I know it's just going to be position scale rotation. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to animate all of these in here and then try to deal with exporting. However, these arms are a bit more complex and I wanted this to be kind of bundled up into one piece that I could export out as need be. So the way I did this was I have this radial cloner, which is pretty straightforward. And if I disable this, I just have this single piece that's kind of on an hinge. The only thing I'm actually animating is this little bushing piece and everything that's a child of it is just along for the ride. So if I go back out of this view. I turned off the cloner and the easiest thing to do is just select all of these and then file, export this out as an Olympic. And then make sure that you have the frames that you want. So I went from 20 to 35, that's how I baked this in here. and. That's pretty much it for that piece. The rest of these, um, these rings I combined into one mesh. I tried a few different versions and getting the cloner in, it ended up just being easier to make these one solid object and I just kind of fudged it in Unreal and it was a lot easier to play with. So I brought these in as one piece. You could just merge these the way that I've got it and just be done with it. I left it alone and just exported it out as an FBX. And then everything else from there, um, assuming I did the rings and everything else aside, you can pull that out and then just export out all of this else, 
all of your other objects as an FBX, and that'll get these into Unreal. Okay, so we're back in Unreal now, and we're gonna start putting together this blueprint piece by piece. I've imported in a single arm on its own as Alembic, so I exported that out as an Alembic that I'm gonna put together, you'll see in a second. I've imported the FBX already with all of these static pieces that we're gonna animate inside Unreal into our own blueprint. So let's start making it. First thing I'm gonna do, make a new blueprint. So right, right click, blueprint, just gonna make an actor. I'm gonna call this BP Mushroom Bumper, because that's what it is. Okay, blueprint's open. Now we just need to start importing our pieces little by little. So let's start with the FBX. We are going to select all of these pieces and drag and drop them in. And this gives us all of our static meshes inside of this blueprint, which is what we want. So we've got this mushroom. Great. And I'm gonna go ahead and toggle visibility on some of these right now, just to make sure we're set up okay. We're gonna scale this guy up. It's gonna make this a little easier to work with and we could scale it down later if we need to. So since I'm bringing this piece in as Alembic, I wanna make sure I go ahead and delete all of these components so they're not hanging around in here because we baked that into one animated piece and this is looking correct. Now we just need to put our visibility back on and add materials to these really quick. All right, we've got our first round of materials on here. The first thing that I'm gonna want to do is finish assembling this. So we want the arms. So we have all of these pieces that I'll organize in a minute, but let's get the arms in here for right now so we can keep this thing going. So in my Alembic, this mushroom arm animation, we're gonna bring this guy in. And I'm gonna make these a child of this platform because I, that's what I want them attached to. So let's get drag that guy down. Pretty tiny. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go into our top view and I'm just going to start putting these into place and we're going to manually duplicate these around. Um, just for the sake of this blueprint. I also want these to be the same metal, so let's just apply that really quick. exactly where I had these, that looks right. And there's that little lip, just so I know that it's snug in there. Okay, that's looking good. So now we've got our first geometry cache in here, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this five more times and get these all set up, and then we're gonna start animating this as one piece. So I could have merged all these into one piece, uh, which made of, which probably would have made this a little bit quicker than manually placing these, but in the event I wanted to change something, um, I just wanted to have the flexibility of having this as a modular piece that I'm reusing. So that's why I chose to do it this way. So let's start animating this, and then we'll continue to finish building it from there. So the key thing that we're gonna wanna add to this is sequencer inside of this blueprint so that we can call it. So I'm gonna compile this real quick and we're gonna go up to add and we're gonna call it an actor sequence. We're gonna add this. We'll call this mushroom 
bumper fire because that's what we want to do is or trigger why not so this is going to give a sequencer inside of here so we can actually animate these inside of this uh, actor sequence so first thing we want to do is go open and tab and this is going to open sequencer so now that we've got this open what I want to do is start bringing in the pieces that we're going to animate. So let's start with this mushroom. We can grab this, bring and drag it down. But you quickly realize it does not work like normal sequencer for whatever reason. So to do this, we actually have to add this through this track here. And our components, as you can see, gives us a full list of what we want. And I'm gonna start off with this mushroom. This will be our starting point. And I've got this mushroom. I want this to expand up over the course of one second and we're gonna build all the other animations off of this. So to start this, we're gonna add a track, a transform, and I'm gonna to wanna to rotate this on the yaw and location Z. So we're gonna start zero, zero. Let's go up to one second and let's raise this guy up to a height that we want. do 6.4 let's add our keyframe there and we're gonna rotate this guy in 180 degrees so now I'm gonna adjust the easing of this but that looks pretty good so I want this to animate slightly different so we're gonna open up this curves and you can see this functions exactly like sequencer and all I want to do is just slow this down and just exaggerate this just a little bit. So we're gonna do that on the rotation and location. So subtle difference, but makes a difference. So we've got this piece here and now you can see I have this animating as well. So I want this to go along with it, but we're gonna kind of tweak it in a couple ways. So these rings, I'm going to make a child of this mushroom. And now these guys are along for the ride. I'm just going to give a little bit of animation to this as well to have this just kind of expand up and then slide up as well. Let's see, so same thing here. We're gonna add track component and let's add our rings. And again, I'm gonna use the transform. And this time I'm going to use location Z and our scale. So I want this to end here for position and scale. And then when we go down, I'm going to scale this by about 0.5. And we're just gonna take it down, oops, minus eight, just a little bit for now, and we'll see how that works. Select these two, let's go back over into here. And do the same thing, so for, let's see, position, I'll have it do a similar easing, but for scale, I'm gonna have this go up and over just a bit so that it kind of has a bit of a bounce to it. Let's see if this is working. Yes, it is. So what I want to do is figure out at the height of this, we're gonna really exaggerate this up. Let's see, about enough just so it's not hitting the top. So now this should bounce just a bit, which is what I want. Okay, so we've got the first piece of this that we can go back and review. And now we just need to add, kind of keep fleshing this out a bit more. So the next piece that I'm gonna wanna do, metal disc one. So add component, metal disc one. And same thing here, I just want this to rotate. Oops, add a track, transform. Let's check which rotation I want. Yeah, still yeah, good. So start this at zero, keyframe it, go to the end, and we'll just have this do a 180 just to give it a bit more interest. So now that guy's spinning as this goes up. And again, 
want to exaggerate this a bit. So this way it'll be a little more aggressive. Nothing crazy. So we've got these main pieces spinning, which is great. That's a good start of what we want. The next thing we need is we're going to have this expand up. And then right around here, we want these pieces to unfold over. So pretty straightforward, same thing. We're going to go track, add component. And this time, we're going to go through and add our arm animation. And then under here, we're going to expose. We want the start time offset. This is going to be our animation track for the geometry cache. And as you'll see, this guy, if you scrub it a ton, goes nuts. So we're going to start here at zero, and we're going to have this expand open, and I believe it's 0.5. So half of a second, I'm pretty sure, though. That's in seconds, not in percentages. So that looks right. That guy's going to swing and snap open. I'm going to keep this linear. Yeah. Keep this linear so that I'm retaining the exact easing that I had in Cinema 4D. I'm not adding easing on top of easing. Perfect. So we've got one of these. Let's go through and quickly just add the other ones really quick and we will have all of these going. So add our components. Select them all. Start time offset, whatever that is. And now we're just going to select these keyframes and we're just going to go and paste them in. And just like that, we've got all of these animating. So this guy spins up, these snap open or rotate open or whatever. And that's looking the way we want. And as you can see, it's pretty easy. We're building out this reusable piece and this is all coming together nicely. So we've got our Alembic, we've got our static meshes that are no longer static. We've got our active sequence. The other thing that I added to this is I wanna add some controls to this and make it so I can duplicate it and change a few things is I added a light. So let's compile this right now and save it. So good to save. So this guy's expanded open. I'm gonna go up to add and in here, oh, rectangular light. Yep, get them back and forth. So we want a rect light. So I've got a movable light, which is good. I wanted this to up light so that when it's a dark scene, I can kind of take this and have the light cast upwards. Kind of hit off the bottom of this. And we'll start, let's go into our side view, just so we can see. Get that right underneath the bottom of those blades. And that'll also give a little bit of added animation as well. All right, back to our main view. Ah, okay. So I'm watching this back, and this is looking good, but to me, it's feeling just a little flat. So one thing I want to do is just, I can parent this stuff since I've already animate or keyframed it. All of these are attached to this platform, which actually I think what I want to do is attach them to this bumper. So I'm going to grab these, move them up to this ramp. And because this piece is already spinning, this metal disc one, I'm going to take this ramp and just make it a child of that. So now when this guy spins, it just adds a bit more um, movement, pizzazz, whatever you want to call it. But this is now getting to the point of where I want it. So I've got this light. I'm going to add some controls. But the last thing I want to do inside of this track is I want to add audio so that when this thing spins up and we fire it, it's got audio associated with it. Um, and it's one less thing that I have to deal in in post. So I've imported a few sound effects tracks. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new track and we're gonna make an audio track. And we're gonna start off at the beginning and we're just gonna type in what we need. So we've got this first impact sound. This is going to play, I'm gonna scrub this up cause I want this to play right when this thing starts. And I'm gonna add in one more audio track and we'll do our 
other impact. And this one, I wanted to come up and happen to be more around the back end of this. So right around here, we'll have this thing start. And I'll show you how to preview these momentarily. So we just know our audio's in here. We can come back in here and tweak this. But now this is the full, everything that I want is in here to have this animation set up. And it's all inside of this actor sequence, which is great. So the last thing I wanna do is when I duplicate these and move them around, I wanna have a little bit of extra control over the lights. So let's set that up. So let's jump into the construction script. And pretty simple, we're just gonna add some quick controls to this. So let's bring in our, let's rename this really quick. We'll call this under light. Let's bring this guy in. And we just want to set two things. So I want to set the intensity of this light. And I also want to set the light color. So that way we can control brightness and we can control the color of this uh, every time we make one of these. All right, so we've got that. So I'm going to promote this to a variable. We'll call this light intensity. Great, I'm gonna expose this so we can access this to uh, outside of this. I'll expose this to cinematics. Um, I don't know if we'll animate this, but why not? And then this new light color, promote the variable as well. And this will be light color, you guessed it. So we can compile this, add this to here, and we are almost finished. So let's let's check to see where we're at right now. Let's go back to this folder. So let's just add this blueprint into here and just kind of see where we're at. So this is looking how I want. We've got our materials, everything's in here. Probably should add a color to this that's not black. Crank that up. All right, so we've got a light. All right, we can change the color of this to whatever we want, and this will be on a per blueprint basis. So I'm gonna move this guy over here. As you can see, now I've got color controls for each one. So one thing I forgot is to set up the animation for these blade spinners. Let's cut this in. Okay, final piece that we need to do now that we have this is that I've keyframed this full animation and it's looking good, but I want these spinners to just constantly be rotating. I don't want to have to deal with keyframing um, and looping them, so we're just going to automate this part. So in the event graph, we're going to run this off the event tick. And I've got these blade spinners selected. We're going to import this guy in. And what we need to do is we're gonna add local rotation. And so let's add that now. We're gonna run this off the event tick. So every frame, this is just gonna keep updating like a motor. And then I'm going to split struct on this because I only wanna animate in this position. So we're going to promote this to a variable and we'll call it gear rotation make this guy public i don't think we need to animate this in cinematics but this will just give us constant speed that we can check and we're going to compile this and i'm just going to set 0.25 to start and then we can test that so back in this view you won't see this now but you'll see this once we actually get this going into play okay so the final thing we need to do is set this up on an event so that we can trigger this using a single keyframe inside of Sequencer. So to do that, we're gonna right click, custom event, and we will call this mushroom bumper trigger. Uh, oh, I already took that, call it fire. Okay, so we're going to use this to fire the event. And we need to bring in our animation sequence, our actor sequence. And we're going to expand off this and just hit play sequence. And it's that simple. And we plug this together. So now when we go to call this, and I'll show you how to do that right now, 
the event is going to say play sequence and we're going to play everything that we put inside of this actor sequence let's minimize this and let's try this so we've imported our blueprint into here we're going to go to track and now our event track trigger this is going to call that out so the first thing that we need to do we're going to pick a point in time and just make a keyframe and you'll see it's grayed out and that's because there's nothing added to it so we're going to right click on this go to properties down to event where it's unbound quick bind and you can search for it in here but since i've named it mushroom bumper fire that's the event that we just made we are going to add that to it and what this does is it opens up something called the director blueprint and this is a special blueprint just for this sequence um, i don't do a lot in here it pretty much automates the process but it'll do this every time you set one of these up so we've got you know it's just telling sequencer to fire this so we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it and now when we go to play you'll still notice nothing's going and why is that so in order for this to work firing these events is like rendering in the movie render queue you have to hit the movie render queue runs off of the you know with like you hit play and you're in play mode this is how it works so now you can see it's got the audio we can play this but we're going to stop this first because there's one thing i forgot to do and let's go back into this viewport auto play loop start with tick enabled so that's one thing I want to turn off on this so component tick we're gonna do this for all five of these start with tick enabled we want to turn that off and recompile this so now this shouldn't play by default so if you see those kind of going haywire like that that's why so now if I hit play you'll see that this is in its stuck state which is good we're gonna to have to go back and adjust this to make sure that it starts in the bottom but you can now see that I've got this rotation that's automated and then when I hit play you can hear the audios in there and the animations there and it'll play and you can trigger this and we can expand this out but that is what we want so if I edit this I'm gonna figure out why that's starting in that way so we're gonna compile and save and start on the zero frame and we're gonna re-add this to the scene and that's why I don't know why that is the case, but I think when it was added, it was stuck there. So we're gonna just delete this guy for the sake of that. Let's bring this up to six. Six is good. And go back through this again. Mushroom bumper, event, trigger. Move this guy back to there. Properties, unbound, quick bind, fire, go. So, fire this up again and we hit play. And that is doing exactly what I want which is great. So to finish this off, now, since I've got these in here, the only minor pain in the butt is just having to deal with the director blueprint, but if we can take these and start offsetting these in time, I'm just duplicating these and moving them around. Did something like that, kind of how I set that scene up. So now let's go through and just add these in and go through these steps again, event trigger, we'll just start with number two, fire one there, the third one there, something like that, and then the fourth one there.
And just like that, you've now duplicated a bunch of items all at once that you can fire this off. So go through it. And all of that is down to next to nothing on keyframes. So if we want to change this, we can. So say that's moving a bit slow. Um, gear rotation, I want this one to go faster. And then say this one, I want to go in reverse. Well, As you can see now, we can now adjust the speed of these or change directions and we can change our lights. So we have control, we've got the animation in here. We can duplicate these all willy-nilly however we want. Uh, and that's really about it. Beyond that, you can go through and, like I said, with this rig, I can go through and add the spline and, let's see. I can go through and then keyframe this up. So the way I did the rest of this was I just keyframed this pinball to go to the end and then went through and just adjust these keyframes to about where I wanted them to hit. And it was pretty simple. Not a lot of keyframing, pretty easy to do, and it's all contained. So if I wanna make changes, I can do it in mass amounts. Hopefully, this just blew your mind. If it did, show some love.